heavy tire wear because some of these vehicles, like I said, now are averaging up to 20, you know, thousand plus miles. The Striker is built to maximize the ease and speed of repairs. The vehicle's modular design allows mechanics to quickly swap out broken components thousands of miles from home. They can even remove and replace an entire engine. It takes three to four mechanics only an hour and a half to trade out a FUP, or full up power plant, with a new one. As far as my maintenance crew goes, there's not a maintenance crew that can touch this crew. You know, they are the ones who make the, this striker stay the way it is. If it wasn't for the mechanics that we have and the knowledge that these mechanics have, their striker and any other vehicle that the Army has would not survive. In combat, where soldiers' lives depend upon the maintenance of the vehicle, the strikers have established a benchmark for reliability. In fact, the strikers maintain a 90 to 95 percent operational readiness rate. The lessons learned in combat are being taught stateside. In Fort Lewis, 30 mechanics maintain and repair the 3rd Brigade strikers. General Dynamics contractor Ted Hervey has supervised contract workers and Army maintenance crews in Iraq. Okay, the, the Stryker engine is a Caterpillar 3126 UE engine. It's uh, 350 horsepower. It's combined with an Allison automatic six-speed transmission. The Stryker engine will move the Stryker along at uh, about 75 miles an hour. It has the horsepower to climb steep grades, get out of situations quick. The driver puts the, the vehicle in drive, steps on the gas, and away he goes. Well, the vehicle cannot be operated in four or eight wheel drive, which uh, enables them to, to operate in sand, uh, snow, mud, highway mode, uh, cross country. You know, the vehicle also has a central tire inflation system that the air pressure in the tires can be lowered or raised based on the terrain that they're operating in. Tires allow the vehicles to run more smoothly than track. And a striker's tires are designed to keep rolling even when flat. The striker's tires are lined with hard rubber inner tubes known as the run flat system. In the event that a tire blows out, the vehicle can continue rolling on the hard rubber tubes within. This system enables strikers to reach speeds of up to 50 miles per hour on eight flat tires. In the desert terrain of Yakima, 120 miles east of Fort Lewis, training that started three days earlier culminates in a massive live fire exercise. It will bring together everything the soldiers of the 3rd Brigade have learned and will require tight coordination between infantry and their strikers. Apocalypse 5-3, this is Patriot 5-3. Uh, request BDA once you're uh, completed the mission. Over. To simulate a real mission, they'll be assaulting a makeshift enemy camp. Half the brigade has combat experience, but this exercise will help them sharpen their skills and will give new soldiers a first taste of battle. The two squads are going to enter, secure the compound. I'm going to posture another one here. Compound secure. Take down building 20. I'll call Lieutenant Alexander and tell him we're set. Commanders deliberately scheduled this exercise on the final day of training. Many of the soldiers have been awake for 72 hours, just as they might be in wartime conditions. The only rest has come while riding in their strikers. Troops have to get to the fight somehow. That's really the bottom line. You know, they can parachute in or take helicopters or walk. The striker is an awesome capability because it's what it allows us to do is travel from point A to point B, you know, 60 miles an hour, plus have uh, very, very good protection. As dusk approaches, the strikers race at full speed toward the objective, a small compound with one main building and a few small outlying shacks. In the heat of live fire, communication and coordination become even more critical. As the soldiers close in on their target, 
the strikers leapfrog each other, exposing themselves to fire from all sides. The strikers' battery of communications gear helps to keep order in what could quickly become a chaotic and dangerous exercise. I think that uh, what we're doing here today is what uh, U.S. forces are doing uh, every day, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what we're doing is what we're expecting to do when we go back to theater sometime next year. We, we realize that the fight will change to a degree, uh, but what we're practicing for is some of the hardest stuff that we might get asked to do. Combining intense training with a high-tech vehicle, the 3rd Striker Brigade prepares to return to combat. In just months, they will rotate back to the front lines, trusting their lives to this vehicle. Let's go, go, go! In an engagement, uh, the guns on these things are massive, so that's a lot of firepower that we don't carry because we can't. You hear those big guns go off, it's reassuring, and that's the ultimate kind of security. The Striker vehicle has not only met the Army's expectations, it has exceeded the Army's expectations. 50% of this brigade rode in Iraq in these Strikers, and they are confident in their ability, and they're willing to go back to Iraq again next year in these Strikers. For veteran and rookie alike, troops know they can rely on a vehicle that's as safe as it is straightforward. It's a very simple vehicle. It's a tough vehicle. It's rugged. The tires are, will take a beating. It's easy to work on. It's easy for the guys to learn. It has a lot of uh, advanced technology in it. High tech, but simple. It's just an outstanding vehicle. A vehicle that seamlessly integrates highly trained infantry with the latest